Hey guys. So today's video is a request, one that I've been promising for a while now. Um, it is actually about the Zodiac Killer, which I'm excited to finally cover. I apologize it took me this long to do, but I just wanted to make sure I had all of my inf information correct. Um, there's a lot of information, so I'm going to sort of condense some of it, um, like all the details of each murder. Um, I'll go over what happened to them, but not so much in great detail like I have in other cases. So I hope that's okay, but there's just a lot more to cover than the murders themselves. And this was a request from uh, Weird Dogs and also Jason G. So thank you both very much for requesting this. I'll link all of my sources below. There's a lot of them for this case, but as usual, they'll be in the description box if you're interested. Quick baby update, I'm doing great. Um, I am now in my eighth month of pregnancy, so that's pretty crazy. Um, didn't realize so much before I was pregnant. I had a friend tell me once that pregnancy technically lasts 10 months because uh, I guess 40 weeks equals 10 months, but if someone is eight months pregnant, they're in their eighth month, not that they've been pregnant for eight, eight months. So I still have technically eight weeks left, but it could be any day. Um, I'm past the 32 week mark, so it's safe for the baby to come out if anything, you know, there's a reason for him to. So, Again, I've had high blood pressure issues, so um, if I have an ultrasound tomorrow and I have a week, weekly ultrasound after that uh, because of my blood pressure and because I'm on blood pressure medicine, so if anything happens and I suddenly am induced or something or I'm just missing, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the best way probably to find out, um, I just started pouring. The best way to find out um, would be to follow my Instagram. I have a new Instagram that I made just for this channel um, and it is linked below. It's uh, my Instagram name is Haley Sulfridge channel. Um, I also have a Twitter account. I don't know that I'll update that. I'm not as good at tweeting, um, although I do like it and I do like getting on Twitter and stuff. Maybe I'll get better at it. But the best way to find me is through my Instagram page. I believe it's public, so if you don't have an Instagram, you can still view it, and um, <clears throat> I'll try and update you guys. And obviously, if I'm missing a Wednesday video, you know probably something about the hospital or something. So check that. That's the best way to get an update if um, I go missing. Let's get started. So the Zodiac Killer um, is a pseudonym of an unidentified serial killer. <clears throat> who operated in Northern California from at least the late 1960s into the early 1970s. And I say at least because he's never been caught and there's a lot of suspected murders that he may have been involved in. So his killings could have, start, could have started earlier than they um, are suspected to have. We'll never really know unless suddenly he comes forward, I guess. But we're now what 50 years out so I don't see that happening the Zodiac himself um, and I say this because of his communication with the press which is a big part of this case that we'll go into he claimed to have killed up to 37 victims the killer originated the Zodiac name himself in a series of letters and cards that he sent to the local Bay Area press the letters included four cryptograms or ciphers and to this day, only one of these ciphers has actually been solved. Um, many areas in California has kept, have kept the case active all these years. Um, San Francisco Police Department marked it inactive in 2004, but they reopened it in 2007. Now, the only confirmed victims of the serial killer were two attacks that uh, those people survived and were able to give sort of a description of their attacker as well as five victims who sadly did not survive. So the seven confirmed victims and a brief, very brief history on what happened to them is what I'll go into now. Uh, David Arthur Faraday, who was 17 years old, and Betty Lou Jensen, who was only 16, were out basically parked at a lover's lane type deal um, and were shot and killed on December 20th of 1968. And this was on Lake Herman Road. On July 4th of 1969, Michael Majot, I apologize if I'm messing up that last name, <clears throat> who was 19, and Darlene Elizabeth Farron, who was 22, were shot in a parking lot of Blue Rock Springs Park. While Majot did ultimately survive the attack, 
Farron was pronounced dead on arrival at Kaiser Foundation Hospital. On September 27th of 1969, Brian Hartnell, who was 20 years old, and Cecilia Ann Shepard, who was 22, were stabbed nearby a lake. Hartnell did survive um, the attack. However, he was left with eight stab wounds to the back and Shepard sadly died on the 29th due to the injuries. Paul Lee Stein, who was 29 years old, was killed on October 11th of 1969 in the Presidio Heights neighborhood in San Francisco by a gunshot. Now, some suspected victims of the Zodiac Killer I'll cover now, um, though none of these have been confirmed um, attacks by the Zodiac. Robert Domingos, who was 18, and Linda Edwards, who was 17, were shot and killed on June 4th of 1963 on a beach. Um, they were suspected victims of the Zodiac because of the similarities between their attacks and the attack at the lake six years earlier. Cherry Jo Bates, who was 18 years old, was stabbed to death and nearly decapitated on October 30th of 1966 at Riverside City College. Her possible connection to the Zodiac um, only appeared four years after her murder when a reporter received a tip regarding similarities between her attack and the, Zo and the other Zodiac killings. Donna Lass, who was 25 years old, was last seen on September 6th of 1970 in State Line, Nevada. There was a postcard that was mailed to one of the press outlets that the Zodiac had been communicating with. And on the back of the postcard, there was an advertisement for a condominium complex pasted to it. And this was received on March the 22nd of 1971. And it has been interpreted as the Zodiac claiming Lass's disappearance as a victim. The Zodiac is also a suspect in the unsolved Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders. Kathleen Johns, who was 22 years old at the time of her um, attack, was abducted on March the 22nd of 1970 on Highway 132. She escaped the car of a man who was driving her and her infant daughter around the area between Stockton and Patterson for approximately an hour and a half. Um, so she, it's suspected that possibly the guy that was driving them around and that kidnapped her was the Zodiac. So now we'll get onto the communications of the Zodiac, which is probably the most famous part um, of this whole case, is sort of the allure that he pulled in from this. On August 1st of 1969, interestingly enough, um, right before the Manson murders, three letters that were prepared by the killer were received at different newspaper outlets. And the letters were almost identical to each other. These letters did take credit for the shootings, the recent shootings that had happened. Each letter also included one third of a 408 symbol cryptogram, which the killer claimed contained his identity. The, the killer demanded that these uh, ciphers be printed in the papers on their front page, or he would quote, cruise around all weekend killing lone people in the night then move on to kill again until I end up with a dozen people over the weekend. The Chronicle published its third of the cryptogram on page four of the next day's edition, and an article printed alongside the code quoted police chief Jack Stiltz saying, we're not satisfied that the letter was written by the murderer and requested that the writer send in a second letter with more facts to prove his identity. The threatened murders did not happen, and all three parts of the cryptogram were eventually published. Um, the only one that has been solved states the following, and if you actually read it, there's a lot of misspellings in it, and they're not sure if that's, you know, on purpose or something to do with the cipher being messed up or what, but this is the only solved one. It states, quote, I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all to kill. Something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and the I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop, it says atop, but stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. And then there are 18 letters that have not been solved. Um, 18 jumbled together letters, basically. On August 7th of 1969, another letter was received at the San Francisco Examiner 
with the salutation, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. The following day on August 8th, Donald and Betty Hardin of Salinas, California, cracked that 408 symbol cryptogram. On October 14th of 1969, the Chronicle received another letter from the Zodiac, this time containing a swatch of Paul Stein's shirt tail as proof that he was the killer. It also included a threat about killing school children on a bus. To do this, the Zodiac wrote, quote, just shoot out the front tire, then pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. At 2 p.m. on October 20th of 1969, someone claiming to be the Zodiac called the Oakland Police Department, demanding that one of two prominent lawyers appear on a local television show. One did appear, and the show host um, asked that nobody call in, none of the viewers call in as they normally could to keep the lines open. Eventually, someone did call in claiming to be the Zodiac, he called several times stating that his name was Sam and the lawyer agreed to meet with him the following day. However, this caller never showed up. On November 8th of 1969, the Zodiac mailed a card with another cryptogram consisting of 340 letters. And this is one of the cryptograms who, which has never been deciphered. The following day, the Zodiac mailed a seven page letter stating that two policemen actually stopped and spoke with him three minutes after he shot Stein. And this, I have actually seen a video of those officers talking about it and just how normal he seemed. And I think they, I wanna say they stopped him because he matched the description, but I guess he was so charming and so normal seeming they let him go. The Zodiac continued to communicate with authorities for the remainder of 1970 through letters and greeting cards to the press. Um, in one of these letters, he stated that he was not responsible for a recent bombing in a police station in San Francisco, referring to the February 18th, 1970, death of Sergeant Brian McDonald, two days after a bombing at Park Station. However, he added in his clarification that, quote, there is more glory to killing a cop than a Cid, I guess he meant citizen, because a cop can shoot back. The letter included a diagram of a bomb the Zodiac claimed he would use to blow up a school bus. And at the bottom of the diagram, he put a symbol with um, a weird looking, you know, either equation or list of numbers and letters. Um, and this symbol has sort of become known as the Zodiac killer symbol. The Zodiac sent a greeting card that was postmarked April 28th of 1970 um, to the Chronicle and written on the card was, quote, I hope you enjoy yourselves when I have my blast in all capital letters. Um, this was followed by the Zodiac's cross circle signature. And on the back of the card, the Zodiac threatened to use the bus bomb soon unless the newspapers published the full details that he wrote. He stated that he also wanted to start seeing people wearing some nice Zodiac buttons. Then in June, um, another later, Another letter came um, in which the Zodiac stated he was upset that he did not see people wearing Zodiac buttons. He then took credit for shooting a man in a parked car with a 38. And some people think this is um, a murder of a police officer. However, the San Francisco Police Department denies that that was the case. Um, but his murder to this day remains unsolved. On October 7th of 1970, the Chronicle received a three by five inch card signed by the Zodiac with his circle cross symbol, which was reportedly drawn with blood. On October 27th of that year, the Chronicle re uh, reporter, Paula Avery, who had been covering the Zodiac case, received a letter. Um, it was a Halloween card signed with the letter Z and the Zodiac's cross circle symbol. Handwritten on the card was a note that said, Peekaboo, you are doomed. The threat was taken seriously and received a front page story on the Chronicle. Soon after receiving the letter, Avery received an anonymous letter alerting him to the similarities between the Zodiac's activities and the unsolved murder of Cherry Joe Bates. Then he reported these findings in the Chronicle. The final Zodiac letter to come in was nearly three years later. The Chronicle received a letter from the Zodiac postmarked January 29, 1974, praising the film The Exorcist as the best satirical comedy that I have ever seen. 
Now in this, um, the letters and numbers that I stated earlier that he would put in the letters becomes more clear in that he had previously written his cross circle symbol equals a number, S FPD equals a number, meaning me versus San Francisco Police Department. In this final letter, he claimed me equals 37, SP, SFPD equals zero. Now, there have been many suspects um, involved in this case, and it's hard to touch on every single one of them, but there are eight main suspects who were seriously considered and mostly ruled out, and I'll go over those now. Lawrence Kane is the first suspect. He worked in the same Lake Tahoe Hotel as Donna Lass, who disappeared in 1970 and may have been another Zodiac victim. He served in the Naval Reserves where he may have learned coding and a 1962 car accident had left him with a brain injury that could have compromised his ability to control urges. He was actually arrested in 1961 for peeping and in 1968 for prowling. A retired police detective um, who was investigating the case in the 80s claimed that Kane's name was embedded in one of the Zodiac ciphers and that Darlene's sister Linda had identified a photo of Kane as the man that she had said who uh, bothered Darlene at a restaurant. One of the officers who had stopped and, sp stopped and spoken to the Zodiac after Stein's shooting um, and let him go um, claims that the photo he saw of Kane was closer than any other likeness he had ever seen. Kathleen Johns, who was the one who escaped the uh, man they believed to be the Zodiac in 1970, also identified a photo of Kane as her abductor. Ross Sullivan is another suspect. Um, the reason he was sus <clears throat> suspected is that Staffers at the Riverside City College Library where Cherry Joe Bates's body was found, they stated that a co-worker who was Ross Sullivan had made them uncomfortable and disappeared for several days after the murder. Sullivan also sported a crew cut and glasses similar to the composite sketch of the Zodiac Killer, and he moved to Northern California in 1967 and was hospitalized several times for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Sullivan also wore an army jacket and military style boots, which sort of matched footprints that were left at one of the Zodiac stabbings. Zodiac buffs also um, note that his letters mention the Mikado by Gilbert and Sullivan, which could be a reference to Sullivan's name. Our third suspect is Arthur Lee Allen. Now he was portrayed as the prime suspect in Robert Graysmith's books one of which was the basis of the 2007 movie Zodiac. Allen was questioned by police in 1969 and again in 1971 after a friend told authorities that Allen had talked about wanting to kill people and secure a flashlight to a firearm as the Zodiac did in one of his killings. Allen also wore a Zodiac brand watch and owned the same caliber gun used in one Zodiac shooting and told the police that the bloody knives in his car were used for killing chickens. He was less than honorably discharged from the Navy and had been fired from his school teacher job amid sexual misconduct allegations. He was also ambidextrous and some theorists say that this could have helped him disguise his handwriting. Now police investigated Allen again in 1991 after an informant facing armed robbery charges stated that Allen had boasted to him about killing a cab driver. At that point, Michael Majot, who had survived the Vallejo attack, identified a photo of Allen as the shooter. Now, he was ruled out as a suspect, as they say that he didn't match witness descriptions of the Zodiac. His fingerprints did not match those that were found in Paul Stein's cab, believed to be the Zodiac's fingerprints. His palm print didn't match one found on a Zodiac letter, and his DNA didn't match the partial DNA profile created in 2002 from saliva on an envelope believed to be the Zodiacs. Police had samples of his right and left handwriting, and neither one matched any of the letters. The fourth suspect is Richard Marshall, who lived in San Francisco near where Stein was murdered. Visitors to his home told police that they found him peculiar and that he had talked about finding so something much more exciting than sex. He liked old movies, including The Red Phantom, which was mentioned in the 1974 Zodiac Letter. 
He lived in a basement apartment, which the Zodiac also stated he did, and owned a typewriter and teletype similar to those that the Zodiac used. He was ruled out, however, and in a 1989 television interview, he stated that yes, there were many similarities between him and the Zodiac, but that he was not the Zodiac. Napa County Sheriff's Detective Ken Narlo, who pursued the case for decades, said that Marshall makes good reading, but he's not a very good suspect in my estimation. Um, our fifth suspect is Richard Gajkowski. Gajkowski edited a counterculture newspaper in San Francisco. A former co-worker sent long rambling letters to law enforcement agencies accusing him of being the Zodiac and said that Gajkowski had invited him to engage in violent acts together. Now, um, recordings of Gajkowski's voice were um, provided to the police and one of the dispatchers who spoke to the Zodiac the day that he was talked to and, you know, let go, said that they thought it was the same voice. He was ruled out because the person who um, accused him, who was nicknamed Goldcatcher, was a known conspiracy theorist with little credibility and was described by a San Francisco police inspector as one of the three top Zodiac kooks. The sixth suspect is Earl Van Best Jr. And this was because in a 2014 book, The Most Dangerous Animal of All, the writer Gary Stewart uh, made a case that his biological father, who was Best, was the Zodiac. He stated that his father best resembled the composite sketch of the Zodiac. He lived in California at the time of the killings, was interested in ciphers, knew a, Satan to, knew a Satanist and a Manson family member, and liked Gilbert and Sullivan. Best had also served time in prison for the statutory rape of Stewart's mother and may have held a grudge against San Francisco reporter Paul Avery, who wrote a series of articles about the couple, and then who was later threatened by the Zodiac. Stewart claimed to have found Best's initials in the Zodiac cipher, and a document examiner said that the handwriting on Best's marriage certificate matched the Zodiac's. Although their fingerprints didn't match, a mark that could have been a scar was visible in Best's and those found in Stein's cab. Now, he was ruled out um, despite the vast pub publicity Stewart's book received. As the method that Stewart used to crack the cipher was questionable, the fingerprint mark was similar to the Zodiac, only if it was reversed, and the handwriting on the marriage certificate was the minister's, not Bess. The seventh suspect is Jack Terrence, when his stepfather, Dennis Kaufman, claimed he had been the serial killer. Kaufman claimed that Terrence was a dead ringer for the composite sketch and claimed to have a stash of incriminating evidence, including a roll of film depicting possible victims and a bizarre hooded costume like the one that the Zodiac wore during one of his killings. Now, law enforcement quickly dismissed this suspect as they claimed that Kaufman's evidence was nonsense. Um, one of the photos that he developed showed a blob of color he claimed was the Black Dahlia victim, Elizabeth Short and the hooded costume that he provided to police was much cruder than the victims had described. The final suspect is Donald Lee Bujok, or Bujok, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, so I apologize. He was suspected because the hooded man who stabbed um, the couple at Lake Berryessa had said that he just escaped a prison in Montana, and that is what had happened with Bujok. Um, according to fellow inmates, while he was in prison, he talked a lot about killing people to make them slaves in the afterlife, which would match the cipher that was decoded. He had been discharged from the army for mental health reasons, and it was alleged that markings on some Zodiac envelopes spelled out, Zodiac is a veteran with 4F. However, he was ruled out as his fingerprints did not match those believed to be the Zodiac. Um, also, a park ranger who had helped the surviving um, man who claimed the Zodiac had said he escaped a jail in Montana, the um, ranger said that the original story had been Colorado and that the survivor might have gotten it mixed up. Not to mention that Bujok was incarcerated during the Bates murder and other early killings that may have been the Zodiacs. So that is all I have on the Zodiac killer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thank you again to Weird Dogs and Jason G for the request. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below. If you have any suggestions for videos, true crime or otherwise, please leave those in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button as I upload new videos every Wednesday. And other than that, I will see you guys next week. Bye.